And you said recently, quote, when you give, they do whatever the hell you want them to do. You better believe it. So what specifically did they do? If I ask them, if I need them, you know, most of the people on this stage I've given to, just so you understand, a lot of money. You're welcome to give me a check, <laughs> Donald, if you <laughs> like. Donald, if you end I have campaign, kid- I hope you will give to me. I will tell you that our system is broken. I give to many people. Before this, before two months ago, I was a businessman. I give to everybody. When they call, I give. And you know what? When I need something from them, two years later, three years later, I call them. They are there for me. So what and that's get? a broken system. So what- This axis here represents public support for any given idea. On the left, at 0%, are ideas that not a single American wants. On the right, at 100%, are ideas that everyone supports. This axis represents the likelihood of Congress passing a law that reflects any of these ideas, from a 0 to a 100% chance. On this graph, an ideal republic would look like this. If 50% of the public supports an idea, there's a 50% chance of it becoming law. If 80% of us support something, there's an 80% chance. You get the idea. Now, most Americans would probably agree that, with a few exceptions, we should be as close to this ideal as possible. Unfortunately, the way America actually works doesn't even come close. Take an idea that nobody supports, literally nobody, and it has about a 30% chance of becoming federal law. Now. Take an incredibly popular idea, the most popular idea this country has ever seen, and there's also about a 30% chance of it becoming law. This means that the number of American voters for or against any idea has no impact on the likelihood that Congress will make it law. Put another way, and I'm just going to quote the Princeton study directly here, the preferences of the average American appear to have only a minuscule, near zero, statistically non-significant impact upon public policy. So if you've ever felt like your opinion doesn't matter and that the government doesn't really care what you think, well, you're right. But there's a catch. This flat line only accounts for the bottom 90% of income earners in America. Economic elites, business interests, people who can afford lobbyists, they get their own line. Look at how much closer their line is to the ideal. When they want something, the government is much more likely to do it. And when they don't, they have the power to completely block it from happening, no matter how much the rest of the country supports it. They get what they want, and guess who ends up paying for it? We pay for it with the most expensive healthcare in the world. We pay for it with a tax code that's a complete mess. We pay for it with internet that's slower and more expensive, with wasteful spending, a floundering education system, a catastrophic drug war, and one in five American children born into poverty. Almost every major issue we face as a nation can be traced back to this graph. We've all convinced ourselves that there's nothing we can do about it. And that is one of the biggest and most dangerous lies in American politics. The problem isn't that corrupt politicians are breaking the law. The problem is that we don't even have laws for them to break. Right now, corruption is legal in America. And that is something we can fix. Here's exactly how we do it. Right now, it's perfectly legal for special interests to hand huge checks to the members of Congress who regulate them. It's perfectly legal for those same members of Congress to pass laws to help out lobbyists who offer them a cushy job when they leave office. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. There are literally dozens of perfectly legal ways to buy a public official. But that makes the solution pretty obvious. Make corruption illegal. It's perfectly legal for our bank to hire a team of lobbyists whose entire job is to make sure that the government gives the bank what it wants. Then those lobbyists can track down members of Congress who regulate banks and help raise a ton of money for their re-election campaigns. It's perfectly legal for those lobbyists to offer those same politicians million dollar jobs at their lobbying firm. Then those lobbyists can literally write the language of this new bailout law themselves and hand it off to the politician they just buttered up with campaign money and lucrative job offers. And it's perfectly legal for those politicians to take the lobbyist written language and sneak it through Congress at the last second. So now you've got a law that greatly benefits the banks and the whole process can start over. This happens every day on every single issue with politicians of both parties. 
In the last five years alone, the 200 most politically active companies in the United States spent $5.8 billion influencing your government. Those same companies got 4.4 trillion in taxpayer support. And that's trillion, with a T. Corruption is legal in America. And as long as it is, anyone who can spend money to buy political influence will. The solution here isn't rocket science. Make corruption illegal. We already know Congress won't do it. I mean, one look at this chart will tell you that. What we need is a plan that lets us go around Congress and do what the American people do best. Fix this mess ourselves. And that is where the American Anti-Corruption Act comes in. It introduces a strict set of ethical standards. So if you're an elected official on, say, the Senate Banking Committee, you can't take donations from banking lobbyists. It mandates full transparency so the American people know exactly who's trying to buy our elected officials. It changes how elections are funded so clean candidates can win without selling out to special interests. And it does all of this while protecting the people's right to free speech. That's because the act was written by top constitutional scholars, conservative and liberal alike, to stand up to the toughest scrutiny. You can read the full text of the act at anticorruptionact.org. And speaking of the Constitution, let's talk about a little Supreme Court ruling called Citizens United. Here's the thing. While a constitutional amendment to overturn Citizens United would help clamp down on those shady groups, it wouldn't fix any of the problems we talked about before. You could pass that amendment tomorrow and the bribery, the extortion, the conflicts of interest, all of it would still be legal. But in a weird way, that's actually good news because it means we can solve a huge part of this problem with a plain old law. The question is, how do we get it passed? We can go around Congress using a little something called the ballot initiative process. It lets citizens pass laws ourselves, no politicians required. All we have to do is gather enough signatures, put anti-corruption acts up to a simple public vote, and we can start fixing the corrupt system right at home. Here's our plan, in five steps. First, we'll need a law to pass. One that, you know, actually fixes things. Okay, anti-corruption act. Check. Next, we need to bring conservatives and progressives together and get organized. It's the only way to build enough power to defeat the politically entrenched and well-funded opposition. We're in good shape there, though, because everyone already agrees we need to fix our corrupt system. In fact, local Tea Partiers and progressive activists actually teamed up to pass America's first anti-corruption act in 2014. And the movement has racked up even more victories since. There are more than 22,000 cities in America where we can use the ballot initiative process to pass locally tailored anti-corruption acts. And this really matters. We're protecting our communities from corruption, so our schools, hospitals, local resources, and jobs are no longer under the constant threat of getting sold out to special interests. Plus, citywide initiatives and resolutions build momentum for the most powerful way we can go around Congress. Passing anti-corruption acts in states. State acts not only clean up statewide corruption, they change how elections are funded so clean candidates can win office without selling out to special interests. That goes for federal candidates from that state too. Once we pass these state laws, we can send a new wave of representatives and senators to Washington. State by state, we can fill Congress with leaders who got elected under the rules of our new anti-corruption acts, replacing entrenched politicians with new blood. See how this works? By taking the fight to the states, we can fix Congress from the outside. And when these new representatives get to Congress, free from dependence on special interests, they'll be free to vote for and pass the American Anti-Corruption Act at the federal level to fix this problem for good. So that's the plan, and 500,000 Represent Us members couldn't agree more. We're bringing conservatives and progressives together to pass anti-corruption acts across America and put power back in the hands of the people, where it belongs. We need millions more people to join, and that includes you. Start by clicking here and we'll tell you exactly how you can help.